Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. As far as I'm concerned, this heat wave can go away. Like go die in the fiery depths of hell where it came from? Yeah, pretty much. It's been hot for over a week now. And there's at least a week to go. And it's like a 3,000% humidity out there. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's, taking a shower while you take the dogs for a walk. It's not just the heat. It's the humidity that kills you. The humidity is 100% the problem because, like, we were in Vegas and it was hot. Like, we were unhappy with how hot it was. But it was 110 freaking degrees. Yeah. And I was the same level as unhappy as I am here where it's 90 degrees. Yeah. No, I hear you. Because Vegas had, like, 3% humidity but, and here has 70. But one of the things you notice is central air would make all the difference in the world because it, it air conditions the entire house or whatever vents you keep open right and all we would be doing is like wherever the extra bedroom was we would keep that vent closed and then just you know go through the whole rest of the house letting the air go and you'd be having even temperature throughout the house the problem right. here is you go outside of the bedroom and it's like a sauna bath out there. It's right. terrible. And it's because the main air conditioner we have in the main part of the house doesn't dehumidify. The nice one we have in the bedroom, it dehumidifies and air conditions. It's so great. It's so great. So uh, I wanted to talk about some um, 13 horrendous business names. Okay. You mean like hose and plumbing and repair that I saw on the these, freeway the other day? Yeah. These are real business names. So the first one is... It's a restaurant. It's a pizza restaurant located in Massachusetts, okay? Oh, dear. And um, nobody knows why they named it, but they named it Poopsie's Pizza. Poopsie? Poopsie's Pizza. Like, you know, number two. I mean, would you want to go to a pizza place called Poopsie's Pizza? No. Me either. At least it's not Poopy's Pizza. That would be worse. And then <laughs> the article that I got this from says, for number two... Perhaps the ga this gas company in Arizona had just eaten at Poopsies. Oh my so god, what's it called? The business owner's last name was used in um, the name of the business. Okay. Okay. And it's called <laughs> Passmore Gas Speaking because the owner's name is Randall Passmore. Do you think he opened a gas company because his last name was Passmore? Maybe, but but imagine. <laughs> Who's your gas company? Pass more gas. Like, just just too funny. That one is so funny, though, that if I was, like, cruising through the online yellow pages, I would choose them to call first because their name made me laugh. And then there's a really funny one. The company changed its name from this name to Miles Scientific, mm -hmm. but they were originally called Anal Tech. Anal Tech? <laughs> Anal Tech. Why? Why would you name your business Anal Tech? I don't know. And apparently they keep the name Anal Tech in the header of their website. I don't get it. It's That's horrifying. Bizarre. I don't approve. Then there's a company. It's an internet startup, and they thought they were being cool. And their name is OOOOC.com. It looks like the O button got stuck on your computer and just typed out all those O's. That one's just dumb. Then... There is a restaurant based in Malaysia, right. and, you know, English isn't their native language there, um, and the name of this restaurant is Fuck Me Sushi, F-U-K-M-I, Sushi. Fuck Me Sushi. <laughs> now, imagine having to answer the phone when people call. <laughs> they should franchise and open up in the United States. 
<laughs> Can you imagine? Now, here's another crazy one using the person's surname as part of the name of the business, and they're called <laughs> Stubbs Prosthetics and Orthotics. See, that's another one that's funny. I would buy from them if I needed a prosthetic. Well, like, you're, you have a product that you're selling, and you name it Stubbs. Like, that's, that's bizarre. Why is it bizarre? People have Stubbs. They need prosthetics. Then this so funny. Then this next one... Just think disease when you hear the name, okay? Because it's kind of a stretch, but it works. Sam and Ella's Chicken Palace. Sam and Ella's Chicken Palace. Think Salmonella. Oh, I know. I mean, if I was thinking that the place was Salmonella Chicken Palace, I probably wouldn't eat there. My guess is they'll probably end up changing their name. It makes me wonder how these people don't think of this. Here's another one using the last name of the owner. <laughs> Am I gone funeral home? Am I gone is their last name? Yeah. Daniel Am I gone. It's in Western New York. They've offered quote exemplary funeral service end quote <laughs> for a century. <laughs> now this one is really funny. So there's a cleaning company in the UK. Okay. You want to know what it's called? Of course. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Probably not, but tell me anyway. First, I'm going to tell you that the guy Googled to find a picture of their truck, and he says, don't Google this search at work. Oh, my God, I have to. Cock polishing services. <laughs> <laughs> that is just, wow. Now, then there's this other one. It's a tobacco store in Washington, and it's only gathered six reviews on Yelp. So maybe their name has something to do with that. <laughs> but their name is Chew in Butts. Chew in Butts? Yeah. Chew in Butts. I have to tell you the slogan for cock polishing services, though. Cocks give it a shiny gleam. Now, <laughs> this next one is in Lubbock, Texas. Okay. It's an auto body repair service. <laughs> Beaver's Trim Shop. Wow. <laughs> Beaver's Trim Shop. Wow. What is wrong with these people? That is not a female friendly business. Mm -mm. Now, this one's out of business. Um, I wonder why. It What it did was it was like a copy of friend feed. So it consolidated updates from social media okay. into one place. And... Um, it's called Prophylactic. P R O F I L A T I C. Prophylactic. All right. And they didn't survive. Whereas Friend Feed was bought by Facebook for $47.5 in cash and Facebook shares. This other name was just bad. Now, this last one makes me laugh just because of the terminology. Um, if you look up the definition of what this name means. It will uh, make you laugh. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Going Postal. What do they do? Um, do they sell mailboxes? No, it actually doesn't tell you what this one does. Um, it's really disappointing. It's it's baffling though, you know, Going Postal. But but see, it brings to mind like how important a business name really is because it's kind of your first impression with a customer well all of those are funny the Stubbs prosthetics one and the what was the other one that was i thought was really funny cock polishing service no no no, no. it like the the name actually made sense for what they do oh am i gone funeral home that one was also that's also good but there was then there was a third one close to the beginning of the list i can't remember now they used oh pass more gas um, my gosh. All of those, I think, are hilarious. And I think that those kind of names would bring in customers because it's funny and it just kind of works with the rest of the I game. think the Pass More Gas one is probably the funniest one on the I list overall because, because it's legit a gas company. Right. And they're telling you to pass more gas. Right. I think that's hilarious. And I think there are other people with senses of humor out there who would hire them just because of their name. But then it makes me wonder. I mean, we both know we're kind of sarcastic 
people. We have a different kind of sense of humor. It makes me wonder if other people would actually grasp this or would they get angry that that was the name? I, I don't know. It, it's just... I'm sure there are people in both ballparks of that. Yeah, it's it's super bizarre. Um, but like people's thinking today is so linear that I think that if they're offended by it, no matter what you say to them, they're not going to understand why it's not offensive. Because I don't find any of those names offensive. I think Some they're funny. Dumb, but I think they're funny. I mean, and when you think about the the cock polishing services is in the UK, mm-hmm. and like they have those roosters on top of uh, mailboxes, they probably go around and polish those things. They're cock polishing services. Yeah. But it's just funny. And like it says, man, can you imagine Googling that? Like what kind of photos would come up? Gemini Cricket. So I Googled scary. cock polishing services UK. And all I got was the company. Well, yeah, he I didn't say to Google it. that. He said to Google cock polishing services. I know. He didn't say Google the I part with the really UK. I really want to see. And then he said, look at the pictures. I looked at the pictures. That's just but I had the UK. So. Scary stuff. That is just scary, scary stuff. But there was There's another one um, that is that they were a client of one of my past clients. And they were they were also a gas company, which is kind of funny. And they were called Baby Got Gas. <laughs> so so real quickly um and this is going to be a short episode because it's so dang hot uh, and so we'll get out of here after we have this little rant here but i need to rant about something um so actually two somethings first of all what possesses people to butt into other people's conversations and interject and <laughs> correct people and say no that's not what that person said what what possesses people to do that why would you do that i don't know I mean, Especially when you've been told before that it's a problem. And is it any of your business? No. Like, like I can't imagine being at the grocery store and being behind two people and having them say, no, you said this. No, I didn't. I said this and go, no, that's not what she said. I mean, if they were screaming at each other, like one person was screaming at the other one yeah. and you had actually heard, I could see stepping in then and being like, yo, bro, chill. But that's about it. But then the second thing I want to talk about is. There's been this whole big thing where Alyssa Milano, who, in my opinion, is a giant hypocrite for supporting Joe Biden after being the face of the Me Too movement and the whole, you know, believe the woman first, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. First off, what's funny is Rose McGowan, who used to star on Charmed with her, Mm -hmm. um, called her out on it. Did she? Yes. Yes. And to the point where Alyssa Milano blocked her. They were friends. Um, But another interesting aspect of all that is Tara Reid herself came out and said, well, Joe Biden, you know, Alyssa Milano, I'm disappointed in you. Joe Biden raped me. And um, not once, not twice, but three times and um, ruined my life, um, made me lose my job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. Rose McGowan is talking about how, you know, what's wrong with the Democrats? You know, they're they're evil. They're they're never going to accomplish anything. They keep saying these things and they never do anything. And all these people are like, oh, my gosh, Rose. You know, I thought you were a Democrat. I didn't know you were a Trump supporter. Well, literally, she said she doesn't like Trump, but she also doesn't like Biden. She was a, a Bernie supporter. Yeah, she doesn't like Trump and she doesn't like Biden. Why is it that people are so linear in their thinking that because she's talking shit about Biden, she must be a Trump supporter? I mean, I talk shit about Biden. I also talk shit about Trump because I'm not a supporter of either. Right. And that is a concept too difficult for some people on the Internet to wrap their dumb little minds. Well, and the hard part about this is we, meaning you and I, would like to see people change their way of thinking about voting. And they're not going to be effective when you got dumbasses going around perpetuating the myth that there's only two choices. And like one of the things that people don't seem to get to wrap their head around is they've spent all this time like pushing this Joe Biden guy. And then they say, well, I don't really like him, but I have to vote for him because I want to get rid of Trump. Why didn't they take their energies into taking up the cause of either the libertarian or the green party candidates and push those people instead because you know if major people with major followings pushed one of the third party candidates 
there would be traction. And make sure that they get on the debate stage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People need to understand that there's more than one choice out there. More than one choice. And I'm sorry, but there's a third thing that I'm going to rant about. I do not understand why 20-somethings, males especially, go on social media and act like they know it all. Even when you prove them wrong, they act like they know it all. And Because they're 20-something males. It makes no sense to me because all my life, when someone shows me evidence that something I said was incorrect, I acknowledge that my entire life. Have you ever wondered why so many 20-something women have no interest in dating the people they're well, I don't age? have to wonder. I see it playing out. <laughs> like, like, who would want to date a guy that doesn't ever admit he's wrong? Right. And like I told you the other day. Nobody you know, got time for that shit. I told you the other day I had that conversation with that guy who like may made some claim and I said, well, isn't it interesting that 58% of those people saying they're going to vote for Biden say they're doing so because they don't like Trump, not because they like Biden. Right. And this person told me, well, that's not true. So then I gave them the poll that it came from. And they proceeded to tell me that I wasn't able to back my comment up with statistics. So I said, well, what the hell do you call the actual poll results? I mean, those are the statistics. Right. There was a poll. It was done. Here's the people that did it. Here's the results. Here's the analysis of the results. Those are statistics. But because yep. it proved him wrong, he had to like talk around it and avoid it. And that's, you know, that's something I found kind of interesting when we met with the lady yesterday who's a city council candidate in Buena Park. Mm -hmm. I found it very interesting that like she very quickly understood why I told her not to talk about her opponent. Right. But I'm not sure she understood 100% why. Yes, part of it is not being negative, but the other part of it is, do you remember when, why young, Kim when young Kim lost to Sharon Quirk Silva because she put Sharon Quirk Silva's name on all of her signs? In big, bold letters like a giant dingus. Which basically gave everybody the idea that that was a Sharon Quirk Silva sign. It let them know she was running, and when they went in the ballot box, they were like, oh, I remember that name. I saw signs everywhere with her name on it. Yeah. Well, that's why you don't mention your opponent. She's making the same mistake again right now. Every single one of her social media posts starts with Gil Cisneros, blah, 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 blah. She's making the same mistake again. Yeah, not good, you know. And she's a nice person. I think she would do really well, but that's just making not good. a mistake. That's just not good. So, you know, to recap. <laughs> a lot of things. We have a heat wave going on. We have 13 crazy business names, although my personal absolute favorite is Cock Polishing Service because that that those people have balls to put a name out like that. Like that that's ballsy. And again, can you imagine it, means some, it doesn't mean the same thing in the UK. They but don't Can really you imagine cock. answering that phone? Cock Polishing Services. How can we polish your cock today? <laughs> yes, this episode's going to have to have an e on it. Yeah, it's um, all your fault. Passmore no, guess was my favorite. Yeah, it's just funny. But and then you know don't interrupt into people's conversations. Just stay out of their conversations. There's no point in being in someone's conversation. And final, final, because I'm not. I don't have anything left to say about the last guy. There's more than two choices for president. There's always been more than two choices for president. And you know, you know what? Wasting your vote on a third party did throughout history. What? It got us Abraham Lincoln as the president. He was okay. the third party candidate. He won. He helped end slavery. So that's yeah. what I thought. Maybe that's something that third party candidates should talk about right now. Last well, time we had a third party president, we ended slavery. Libertarians are pushing that right now. Um, very interestingly. So, oh, and on a final note, before we close out here, of course, he has another note. <laughs> we love our 90 day fiance franchise. Devin and Jihoon are filing for divorce and Devin has a new Korean boyfriend. Korean boyfriend? He lives in the United States, but okay. he's a Korean boyfriend. Okay. I was like, are you going to drag your kids to another country again? But never mind. No. Okay. But everybody on the internet is saying she's going to end up pregnant yet again by a different guy. I'm not sure I believe that, but I also kind of wonder if she isn't a bit like Janelle and not yeah. understanding how to use birth control properly. Well, like, seriously, I wonder. You know, that. from the beginning of. The last, the last season when she was headed to Korea, or South Korea, um, 
she was packing condoms because she's not on any other type of birth control. Anyway. That's probably why those people online are saying that. For those of you out there who are going through the heat wave with us. We're sorry. Hope you get to the other side safely like we're planning to do. I'm thinking about getting a giant um, bubble suit and putting ice inside the bubble suit instead of air and wearing it everywhere. You would drown. The water no, would ice wear the out. bubble suit. My head sticks out. My arms uh. stick out. My legs stick out. And the bubble suit covers my body. Bubble suit. I didn't say get inside of a bubble. I said a right. bubble suit. I thought a bubble suit was a bubble, but never mind. Whatever. I mean, I want something you, like bro. a giant ice bag, like I like for my a giant hand. Ice bag. I, I told somebody. I told somebody online today. I was about to start filling my bathtub with ice to prepare for yet another shitty, humid bullcrap day. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, on that absolutely delightful note. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Thank you for listening to the nightly rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.